I'm creating an Arduino powered hexapod from scratch, and today I'll be going over how I designed a 3D printed compliant spring mechanism to replace my old foot pressure sensors. I also redesigned a few other pieces in the tibia and femur. I've kept you waiting long enough, so let's just jump right into it. The original worked, but it had a couple of issues. It required the metal part of the switch to be cut, which was surprisingly difficult to do. The switch easily fell out of the foot, and the metal dowel was not only annoying to work with, but it also added to the cost. I probably could have just fixed the current design. The main reason I wanted to redesign was to add some sort of shock absorption, and building it directly into the switch mechanism made the most sense. Why do I even need shock absorption? Well, I've been having some problems with the metal gears and the servos literally bending under the immense pressure I put them under. So I was hoping the shock absorption will help mitigate this. My first idea was to take a 3D printed shaft and have a metal spring go around it, so like an actual shock absorber. But I decided I'd try to come up with a fully 3D printed version first, which would reduce cost and be insanely easy to replace and change. The first attempt was rough, not gonna lie. The shaft was a bit too big, which to be fair is something I'm used to, and the spring was insanely stiff. But despite this, it did prove that the design would actually work, so I continued. I fixed the shaft width issue and tried making the spring looser by increasing the gaps specifically in the joints, but this caused it not to return to its original position after pushing it. I reverted the spring gap increase and it turned out well, but when attached to the leg, the two sides would split apart, which in hindsight makes sense since there was nothing holding them together. I added some holes for an insert and screw, which fixed that issue, but the spring was still way too strong. I also still had no way for this mechanism to actually press the switch. I attached a couple little pokers to the end of the spring that would press the switch in if the spring was stretched all the way. It was pretty obvious though that this solution wasn't great since it was extremely flimsy. I also made the spring longer without adjusting thickness at all. I know, brilliant. My thought was that the extra length would make it looser, but the difference the change made was completely negligible. I realized the switch poker could just be attached to the central shaft instead of the two spring pieces. This not only made it sturdier, but also easier to print. I also made the spring looser by making the entire spring thinner. Finally, this made a huge difference, but it was still too stiff. After making the entire spring more narrow so it would fit in between the tibias a bit better, the last thing was to figure out the optimal spring thickness. I created three new spring designs, each thinner than the last, to see what would work the best. I ended up going with the thinnest one since the other two still took too much force to press down. The new spring thickness was perfect, which is good since I don't think I could make it any thinner. The only thing left was to make it look better, so I made the screw bump edgy instead of curved. I printed six of them, installed them, then it was time to test. Unfortunately, I don't have footage of the test, but uh, it worked great on the carpet, and the moment I used it on the harder floor, two of the shafts instantly snapped. After some trial and error, I finally landed on a design that worked. The shaft was basically as thick as possible, and the spring moved smoothly back and forth with just the right amount of force. Most parts I make don't go through this much iteration, so hopefully this journey was interesting to watch. Because the foot now has a giant spring, the switch had to be pushed back into the tibia, requiring it to be redesigned. I created a little compartment that the switch perfectly fits into, with a flap on top that allows the switch to be easily added and removed. In hindsight, I should have just used a screw, but it is what it is. With the switch secured, the foot spring is able to press the switch through the hole on the right side. I also redesigned the femur and femur support. I wanted to do three things. Increase the range of motion, make it lighter, and make it curvier. Lighter and curvier are self-explanatory, but to increase the range of motion, the actual position of the femur support would need to change, because its current position, being dead center of the femur, causes it to hit the coccyx sooner than it should. The last parts that got a redesign were the bearing shaft and friction pads. The friction pad, which dampens the servos to prevent jittering, screws into the bearing shaft. The tighter it's screwed in, the more friction there is. Two pins were attached to the bearing shaft that go into the friction pad to prevent it from unscrewing itself. This design worked, but it was very fragile and very difficult to 3D print, so I wanted to come up with a better way. I extended a square peg from the round shaft and made a hole in the friction pad that the square peg could slide into. 
This design is better than the original in literally every way. It's more robust, quicker to disassemble, and easier to print. With the parts designed, it was time to print them, which is where PCBWay, the sponsor of this video, comes in. PCBWay's main thing is PCB fabrication, but they also have a 3D printing service. From PETG, they printed me six femurs, six femur supports, six bearing shaft mounts, six friction pads, and 12 bearing shafts. I also wanted them to print six tibia supports, but I forgot to add them to the order, so I had to print it myself. From resin, I had them print all of the foot spring related stuff. So that's six foot springs, six foot spring shafts, and six feet. The reason these were printed from resin was because the pieces had some very thin parts, which were too small for the FDM printers to handle. The price came out to $141, $126 for the Pet G, and $15 for the resin. And of course, this was paid for by PCBWay. The PET G parts came out perfectly. The 0.3 millimeter chamfer I added to the bottom completely fixed the elephant's foot issue I had in the last video. I did have an issue with the bearing shafts though. When I tried to add the heated insert, the shaft expanded way too much and was unable to fit inside the bearing. Fortunately though, the shafts are really quick to print, so I just made my own. Next time though, the heated insert hole will just need to be bigger. Now the resin parts were unfortunately a different story. They were completely unusable. But I kinda did set PCB way up to fail here. The foot spring has an extremely tight tolerance, 0.25 millimeters tight. So this was more of a limit test of PCB Way's resin printing. And we definitely found the limit. The resin printing is super cheap though, so it really wasn't a huge loss. For what it's worth though, the quality of the resin parts was really high, and I'd recommend the resin for anything that doesn't have a super tight tolerance, especially since it was so cheap compared to the PET G parts. Thanks again to PCB Way for sponsoring this video. PCB Way was not the only one having issues printing the foot springs. It took me six separate tries to finally get all five foot springs printed. I swear they normally work for his try, but my printer must have been in a bad mood or something. Seemingly every time I printed, something would go wrong. Finally, on the sixth try, I had one more left to print and I had to slow the speed to 50% and then it finally worked. After printing some new foot spring shafts and caps, which are always super easy to print, the legs were finally ready to assemble. It's funny because as I'm assembling this, the design is already out of date. In the time it took for the new parts to arrive from PCBWay, I learned Fusion 360 and then completely redesigned the entire hexapod live on stream. Feel free to check it out if you enjoy watching me suffer learning Fusion 360 from scratch. This hexapod will be one of a kind, and I think that's pretty cool. It's the design that started it all. Unfortunately, I won't finish updating it, at least not anytime soon. To be honest, after learning Fusion 360, I never want to use Blender for mechanical parts again. Important lesson, the heat gun is hot even after it's off, and I learned that lesson the hard way. It's been over a month, and it still hasn't healed. That mark, right there. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure I accidentally branded myself. Anyway, here it is with the new femur and foot springs. Now it's time to test it. I tested it off camera on my carpeted floor and as expected, it worked perfectly. The real test took place on my hardwood floor downstairs. As you can see, it works. No foot explosions to be seen. You should also be able to see the foot springs getting pressed down as the feet are placed onto the ground. The springs are spreading out the force of the leg hitting the ground. It's still the same total force, but because it's spread out over time, the peak force applied to the gears of the servos is reduced. I have no idea how much it actually helps, but it makes sense intuitively. It goes without saying, but I'm really happy with how this turned out. If you made it this far, hit the like button for me. It helps YouTube and me know if you actually liked the video, and I'm pretty sure you did. The next video will be on the complete hexapod redesign using Fusion 360. Seriously guys, the difference between using Fusion 360 and Blender for this project was night and day. Not only will I be going over the new design in the next video, but I will be printing the entire thing. This is just a test print of some of the parts. The entire thing is going to be printed. And oh my God, this new design is so nice. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.